Heather and Tony and Lindsay and Tiff and Vicky can, there's not a lot older people, we don't, there's no seniors, so I think it's hard um, in the midst of things to, to not have a big leaders in the, in the group that uh, know the ropes from three years ago, you know, so I, I know that Tony and Heather and Lindsay and Tiffany and the somewhat older girls will really have to step up and they're going to have to be leaders that they were born into being but thrown into a situation a lot earlier than expected and um, I know they'll do a great job. Uh, it's important for them to, to do that. So. Coach Becky and Coach Littell got, um, when I, I was like, what am I going to do? When I graduated, I was like, I need my basketball fix and so they um, got me um, in the position to coach at Stillwater High School under Coach Treat and um, I did it all of last year. I graduate in May with my master's here, so it'll be my second year. So you're coaching. Your second year. Yes. Do you always get a coach, or yeah. did, did, he yeah. have a oh, he they, have, did he have a hand in you being a coach? Um, I think I always dreamed of it, but uh, playing playing uh, basketball is my life. And, and what, honest, this is a thing I should have said a long time ago. The biggest memory with Coach Bucky is that um, I came to camp when I was his first recruit, and um, he was sitting on in the middle of the court and in his rolly chair, and he's like, "Come here, come here." And I'm like, "All right." And I, you know, I was in high school, and he's like, uh, "Alley cat or alley girl, alley girl, I need to ask you something." I was like, "Yeah, coach." He's like, "Do you love, do you love basketball?" And that hits home to me more than it ever has. Except do you? And I was like, "I love basketball. I love basketball. I still love basketball, but I know now what he meant by that." And um, those words are so powerful to me. And um, he seriously shook my core when he when he said that to me. And I was just a junior in high school. And, um, and I'm sorry, were you his first recruit? Um, well, ta you know, Taylor and Shantae and them were C Coach Goodenough's recruit, and, and then Coach Becky came. And then, so um, I was, I, I believe I was the first one to commit to Coach Becky because um, I came to camp in the summer. And then, um, then we filled our whole roster full of people. You know, we had Andrea and Rita. We had tons of people, but I, if I remember correctly, yeah, I was uh, the first one to jump on board, and I would never take it back. It was the best decision I've ever made, and um, it was she was truly a special place. Since uh, even Coach Latell talked about how close you guys were, it is very tough. It's like saying goodbye to a father. Um, he really was like a father to all of us. Um, just the way that he was with you every day, checking on you. Making sure you're in class, making sure you're doing the right things, and you know, when when you have somebody like that, it's so hard to say goodbye. So it was very, very tough, and it's been very tough. But I've had my former teammates here, and I couldn't have done it. I was the first um, four-year graduate for Coach Bucky, 2005-2009. You're welcome. Just to describe Coach Bucky in a few words. Who? A few words. Um, Hard-headed. Tough. But a loving, a loving, a very loving man. Those would probably be the easiest things to say. <laughs> he gave me a big bear hug and said, "Hey, I love you, Hardeman. You know, I just want you to know you need to come see me more often." And I was like, "Okay," you know. And so I, I kind of got that goodbye, and I don't know that a lot of people did. So it seems like everybody we talked to says he was like a dad, he was a father. He really was because, like I told others, he always checked on us, wanted to make sure we were in the right place at the right time. You know that we looked nice. You know, it was all about you know, us, and he always wanted to say, you guys are reflecting my children. You are like my children, so you need to act and, and be accordingly, so. Your coach you had too, what do you think was the, the, less, the best lesson <laughs> Coach Buck gave? The best lesson was, oh man, he taught me so much, but just the, the discipline and hard work and to know it's more than basketball. He, I was talking to Taylor last night, he prepared us for our lives outside of basketball. I mean, going in for jobs and interviews and stuff, they looked at us like, hey, you have that, you have, you know, teamwork, you have those skills. And he prepared us for life outside of basketball. It's more than basketball. It's about what you're doing after basketball. He, he's shaping as a player and as a person. Excuse me. To further that, Taylor was talking about how he was a father figure. Uh, help with so much more than just basketball skills and X's and O's. Can you talk about that as well? Um, yeah, he was a father figure to me. I remember when I was going through times with my family, he told me, he called me up to the office, I think it was my junior year or senior year. He was like, you know, Shantae, you got to focus. And I, I never, I didn't have a father growing up. He passed away, and I always looked up to him as a mentor, him and Coach Hotel. And like I said, you know, I, he told me when I my freshman year, you got to do this, you got to lose weight. And, you know, without him saying those things, keep on holding 
harping on me. I didn't know what they meant to me until after college. I was like, wow, like he really shaped me into the person I am today. Like being here, I thought, you know, he's just trying to get on to me, but he was mentally preparing me of what I was gonna have to go through later in my life. The adversity we went, we went through and just the hard times. I mean, it's nothing compared to, cause he always used to tell me, you know, there's more than basketball, there's life. And he was preparing us as women. I grew up here, I was 18, finished when I was 22, and I was a, a lot better person because of him. And, you know, it's like I said, his legacy is going to live on way beyond just what he did here at Oklahoma State. It's going to live on in his kids and in their kids and in the way we treat our families. His, the things he instilled in us are going to live on for a really, really long time. Megan, how do, how do people get back to playing basketball? I mean, to me, it seems like this is where the hard part starts for those kids to have to... It is, but they've actually already started. And I think that's the main thing was... There's, there's almost some comfort in having something to distract you from all of this. Even though it's something that's so closely tied to what happened, there's something in, we got to go, we got to practice. Why, you know, I think um, Ryan Cameron, the sports director, his Facebook said it best. He said um, the Saturday morning that the sun still came up and he was still proud to be a, you know, for Cowboy and Cowgirl Nation. And I think that's the way you have to look at it, is the sun's going to still rise tomorrow. And that's what they would want them to do, is to, you know, to rally together and to, to carry on. And I think that these are a special group of girls, and I think that they will definitely do that.